Hi, everyone. This is my good friend, Shava O'Day. And I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you just one little thing to just so you know, I could tell you a million, million things. I've known her about 18 years. And one of the things she did last year, um, I had to give up my car when I had Lyme disease. So for two and a half years, I've been without a car. Now I'm kind of used to it. <laughs> I just want to say welcome Shala. It's so good to have you here. Finally. <laughs> um, can I just say you always bring up that I would take you to the train and I just feel like it, it's not something that you should be like that um, so grateful for because <laughs> like that's what friends do. But you are just that friend. Like you are the girl that we always tell, we always say you're our benevolent committee. Because when any, anybody is down, talk about somebody who understands like, emotional intelligence. I'm going to address that today as well. Um, but you are somebody that just gets it. And it's some, I wish we could just glean and learn from how do you, how do you do that? Which is what I'm going to try to do today because we're going to talk about a stupid situation we're in as teachers right now. Right. Just got out of a meeting about what it's going to look like when we go back in the fall, which is a couple weeks. Oh boy, let me tell you. The anxiety that we all have. And I see it from everybody's point of view. I see it from the parents, you know, because I have two kids mm -hmm. who want their children back. My kids are like, oh no, we're going back. They, mm, they, are, they want. They, yes. I, yeah. I would think most kids want to go back. Yeah. Um, so I see it from that point of view, and I also see it from the teacher's point of view. Um, it's so difficult because when have we ever been in a situation like this? Never. Never. And, um, you know, I think a lot of parents who are, like, dead set on, my kids are going back. Those teachers, I think they think we are, we don't want to go back. Like we Yeah, like, like we're lazy and we're not, yeah. And working from home during the spring it's hard. was harder. Harder. It was it harder was. than being in the building. It yes. Part of what makes teaching great and, uh, you know, it's such a calling. It really is, is that those connections we make with the kids in the person. The best time, the magic that happens in the classroom with the dynamics of human beings together, yes. discussing, oh, I know that's the part that really makes me sad too. It really does. I tell you, it's like, so I wish they would get that narrative or that out of their heads that teachers don't want to go back. They yeah. want to go Are you It's like they don't trust us. If, if we do have to be on remote learning, that they don't trust that we're going to, they think we're going to be going on a vacation or something. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because that was difficult. It was not fun. Mm -mm. We missed all the great things that mm -hmm. the students missed that we enjoy those things too, graduation yes. and prom yes. and all those things, you know, yes. the last couple of weeks with your seniors, um, mm -hmm. that too. I know. So I let's talk about, um, we have an idea. Now we haven't, we just heard a rumor the governor was going to put us at remote learning at the beginning of the year. That was a rumor. We are going to blended learning. And I really want to commend the committees, administration, everybody that's involved in these decision makings, the union, really, really tough decisions, right? Really tough, yeah. I understand why they need to open the building. I understand why they want people there. However, we were talking, you and I were just talking that it would be best perhaps that we took the first quarter and we just went remote, but we did like a project, yeah. a few projects, which some of the issues that we've always said the school system needed help with, right? Yeah. Such as, well, let's see. We could, well, here's my theory. You know, I've, I've been known to be a little prophetic, but this no science or there's no spiritual backing to what I'm about to say. But I believe COVID and what's happening with race, racism right now are connected. And if we would just take our hearts, clean them out right now, the virus would go away. Now that's simplistic, right? But I truly believe they're connected. Wait, so let me tell you, this now, cleaning your heart would mean to care so much about your neighbor, the elderly, the immune compromised, yes. that you inconvenience yourself in the slightest way by putting a mask on. Thank you. And then COVID would go away. Well, I mean, this is how, I mean, the other countries that, that I know New Zealand, they, 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 
they put the smack down and there's some Asian countries that I'm not even know specifically who okay. got rid of it because Gaza, they were. The Gaza Strip is the most densely populated area oh. in the entire world. There's no way in, there's no way out. They don't let anybody in and they don't let anybody out. No virus. It's the most densely populated, they call it the open air prison because they're not allowed to leave. Right, right, right. And they have had, I'll, I'll find the source, but it's either 45 or 85 cases total and one death. That's amazing. Because the way a lot of these other countries view their elders, view helping their neighbors, it's biblical, it's Quranic, it's, you know, from the Torah. You care about others yes. and their well-being that your inconvenience, the, uh, the small inconvenience is worth it. Seriously. So you have a point there. Like, it's connected. It's connected, people. It's connected. If you knew that your heart, your ugly heart, was causing this, this inconvenience, we have to wear a mask. We can't breathe. How inconvenient. That's how it feels to be discriminated against, doesn't it? I know being of Palestinian descent, you are, you know, I know you can check off the Caucasian box. But, but the, the discrimination you get, it, it, again, it's like, it's simple, people. How can you not understand the plight of, of even just, when I was a young kid, I was discriminated against because I was not as smart. How can I not remember that feeling when I think of people in the society who are treated the same way? I always say that. Someone always asks me, well, how do you how can you be like always thinking like compassionately? And I think to myself, you know, I think it's easy. And this is what I'll tell people. Think of the moment in your life. We've all had it when you have felt so embarrassed, so alone. Thank you. So afraid. Like there was nobody on your side. Think about that deep, dark hole you were in. Go back to that place. What would you have given for somebody to say, I understand you. I'm here for you. How can I help? That's it. That's it. We need an ally. We just need allies. That's it. Like, That's all we're trying to do. It's called unity and all the BS you're seeing on the news and all this division and everything that's happening with divide. That's the, that's the work of the enemy. So well, we need to remember. That's what people, I mean, how this turned political, mm -hmm. wearing a mask is political. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How? It's science. I don't yeah. understand it. It's for your fellow man yes you're not like i'm not gonna you know am i gonna take the handicapped parking spot because i got there first and it's my right mm -mm. no able body again the able body thing where where people are are, are we're able bodied so we have no idea what it's like to need a space closer to the building right so this is that same not understanding like implicit bias and white privilege when people can't even see that Okay, that's where I'm saying then this time, this quarter, that we have an idea. We don't really have it all mapped out. We're just talking about it right now, okay? Right. But we, we see like social emotional learning is in our eval, which I now, we, our eval is a little on postponed. Right, but it's but still, listen, but it is social emotional learning. It doesn't matter. You don't postpone social emotional, especially when you're going through emotional time. Yeah, we've been doing it because we're teachers. It's Thank part you. Of, it's part of teaching. Like I'm not going to just talk about literature yeah. i'm going to teach you how to be a great human being i'm going to try what is the study of literature the study of character study of growth and morality and learning and, and learning from the pitfalls of these characters it's it's the study of psychology so we and have been doing that i'm so different than you Here and saying, wow this person in this book set in africa uh also feels alone or mourns his mother's death Yes. Uh, that's how I felt when my mother died or whatever. Yes. That's the point of literature and how that's completely social emotional. So well, go ahead. I did have an idea when you were just saying that. Yeah. I heard somewhere once that if you understand somebody's story, it's impossible to hate them. So what about a project? And again, I have a lot of things connecting here. There's a project where we learn everybody's story, you know, mm -hmm. including staff. Because this, this part, we just, I mean, we know we need to learn our new learning management system. It would be a perfect opportunity to really learn it. Because this is another thing that's, we just, we flipped it on its head and then we flipped it on its head again. What, what we're going through right now, we have COVID, new learning management. For those of you that don't know what that means, it's like, we've just took in the engine out of the car 
and we're putting a new engine in, but we have to like connect all the spark plugs and we have to connect it all. We can't just go back to school and just turn on the key. We have to now, we have to learn everything under the hood. Even if we're not like auto mechanic majors, we have to learn it because that's- If we've well, never changed a tire. Yes, <laughs> there's a great metaphor. So many of us. There's so much of that car metaphor. That's how it feels, right? I would just like to, and I've learned this recently. I don't think you need to work on your weaknesses. I mean, yes, if you have an ugly heart, yes. But yeah. like, like skills based, like, like, um, like I just need to hire somebody for my weaknesses. You know, like, why don't we get kids oh, to understand? You know I mean? I Listen, I have always said that I do not have spatial intelligence. You ask <laughs> is and I also have no 2,000 square feet and I know right, right. I know that's not correct right 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 but you know I could learn it yeah even like the the, the proposed schedule the boxes I'm like yeah. what am I looking Some at Some people what don't is- yeah I've got good spatial intelligence but when it comes to cooking like you girl forget it I order I meals art I know it is it's creative you know? but it also it's makes a mess it's cooking is not, not the way I cook. I don't mean Oh, <laughs> you don't make messes. No, I clean as I go. That's the, you oh, have that's, to. That's otherwise, what my mom used to do. Uh, otherwise, it's stressful and it's not fun. Okay, got you. Still not fun for me. Plus, I'm not cooking for anyone. You know, that's another reason. But here's another thing about this project, right? I would like to see the community where the kids, I had this idea a while ago. It's not even original. Just walking in Wisconsin in my brother's neighborhood and they have these libraries. They're like little bird houses where you open a book and you see all these books that you, you just give a book when you're done reading it and you grab a book. They're called Why not? libraries. I have little, li- I'm sure. The, yeah. You live in that na- that kind of neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? The ones that have these little libraries. Why can't we bring that to our school community building literacy? And then how about we build those right now? Wouldn't that be a wonderful opportunity right now? So we talked about this uh, briefly over text, but, and we really, there was so much, like if somebody were to read our text messages, <laughs> it never makes sense. It made so much sense to both of us because we both know what we're trying to say. Yeah. So, you know, there's so much uncertainty. Like, and I, I, I think that I would love to be back in the building, but because of the uncertainty, why don't we take Connect SEL, like the first quarter, and mm-hmm. say we're going to do a discovery project. Yes. Okay, a discovery project. Each, um, Subject, find one or two of the standards that you have to cover during first quarter, an SEL connection, and Simple. find a way to make one universal rubric for each department for your self-discovery project Simple. or discovery project. Yes. You know, and, and maybe it's, I don't know. I don't know. Something you're interested in. This goes back to that inquiry-based learning. That's not new. That's perfect. But we never take the time because we have all these other things we're doing. Mm-hmm. Let me define SEL, social emotional learning. There's a wheel here and I'll put it in the notes, self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, and social awareness. So I know we have a hard time now when when we're even in the building, we're not even allowed to have partner work or group work because of COVID. Even though we'll be six feet apart, 15 kids in the class, we are allowed to walk around, but no more than 15 minutes, according to the day we're speaking, this may change by the time this airs. Mm-hmm. Um, so with social emotional learning, I also see, you know, are we not, again, going back to the race issue, there's books that can be read. I have a really good resource I'm going to put out there too, of just getting more understanding of what the history books have not taught us, right? Well, and also it cannot be just book clubs and posters and t-shirts. No, it can't. It has no, to be no. In, it's, it has to be in your presence. It has to be a way of life in your classroom. Yes. We do not speak like this. We do not do that. And we are going to, you want to learn? We're going to learn the truth. Yes. And we're not just going to tolerate. I've always hated that word teaching tolerance. That is ridiculous. When you tolerate somebody, you're seething deep down with anger. You've got to get past that. And there's some people maybe aren't willing to do that, but good luck. You're now in the system where I'm going to Right. It. Well, I remember maybe 10 years ago, I did an all-school assembly. It might have been long. It might have been 11 or 12 years ago for, um, you know, world cultures. And I interviewed you and you said the same thing. You, and I'll, I won't forget. I didn't, never forgot this. You said, 
we, why do we just want to tolerate each other? Why do we just want to teach tolerance? You tolerate jackhammer noises. <laughs> remember what you're saying? I don't remember saying that. Oh, wow, that is so true. You just tolerate it because it's like, you know, you got to do it. Yeah. You yeah. Don't really care for it. Yeah. Trust me. We tolerate, I tolerate people in my life. I try to keep a distance from those people. But but if I'm in, are we, are we really, like, if we really, like, got to know other people that we normally wouldn't know, rub elbows with, this is a magical cure for COVID. I'm sorry. Check your heart. I'm going to go into this emotional intelligence if I can. Yeah. There's just 18 things. And if you want to speak on any of them, um, I don't think I'm good at this one, but you have a robust emotional vocabulary. I don't know if I... I could, I know Jen, Jen does it. You think I do? Yes. <laughs> I think, um, I think Jen's really good at that one. Oh yeah. Well, we get, she's got the hyperbole going on. Um, let's right. see. Uh, you're curious about people for sure. That's highly emotional intelligent when you're curious about others. I mean, you definitely have that. So again, trying to get kids to, or staff to be more curious. I know when you're inundated with the day-to-day minutia because our job is very much a full-time job and then there's kids in the room every you know back in the old schedule every 55 minutes 30 kids come in then you got a four minute break and then every 55 what sometimes 31 kids 31 yes (laughs) and back in LA when I taught there was 38 kids until they balanced the schedule down to 35 kids and then the room wasn't big enough so that was a mess with no air conditioning in the trailers Ooh, those were the days. Um, but again, this, this struggle is real. Um, but the curiosity, I would be more, I am curious about people, but because of the minutia, the, the people connection isn't, uh, isn't there because of it. Like sometimes I'd sit up just for a joke and say, what are you guys doing in my room right now? Jokingly, because yeah. I had work to do, right? But it was just like, people don't understand it. Yeah, well, I have, I'm just as busy as you are. Yeah, 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 I know you are. Your job is very demanding, I get it. But you don't have 30 patients at one time. At one time. Right, 30 clients oh, at different. one time with different oh, needs that you have to meet their needs too. It's not just that you have them there babysitting them. You have right. to make sure their needs are met and you and know they're- Your lesson is adaptable. Like you can get the message across. Mm to 30 different learning styles, 30 yes. different learning disabilities. I mean, yes, yes. Different challenges. Mm. it's challenging and, but it's rewarding yeah. when we can do it. Yeah. Right? You feel like a failure every day, but at the same time you don't, I don't because I love them as much as I can. And right. to me, if I know when I put my head on the pillow at night that I am loving people harder than maybe I did four years ago when I decided that we needed to love people harder. <laughs> um, I really think that that is huge, right? So, okay, three, you embrace change. Emotionally intelligent people embrace change. Are you there? I'm more there than I used to be. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with having kids too. Oh, That's- you have to be adaptable though, but you don't yeah. want as much change. You don't want as much change when you have kids either, right? You want some I stability. I mean, you, don't, you want them to say little. Yes. Oh, you know, but I hope but, they make a cameo while we're talking. <laughs> I don't even know where they are. <laughs> she has a great neighborhood, guys. Oh, she's got neighbors there. that will take care of them, so there she's good. I, 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 I they are taking a nap, so okay, cool. They, they get up early with me to go for my run. That's probably why they're taking their naps right now. Good, good. But um, and they're also on that like Palestinian schedule, which is oh. midday nap all the time. Yes, that gene missed me because I can't sleep during well, the day. It's coming up, isn't it? Eid is coming up. It's July 31st. Do you all stay up at night, all night? Big Eid. So this is not the fact. Oh, it's a bigger one. Yes, because the first one is where we celebrate the end of Ramadan, which is the 30 days of fasting, sacrificing to know what the poor feel like Mm -hmm. and um, being good to people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's that. This Eid is always 70 days after the fasting Eid. And this Eid, we call it the Big Eid because it celebrates when... um, Abraham had so much faith in God that he said, sure. Yes. Know. Yes. He, he put, can you imagine putting in the, putting your knife? Right? Okay. Laura, I have the, I have enough faith right. to, to sacrifice my son. And then he stops him or an angel stops. Him. Yes. It's, so that's why we celebrate that, that the big E is the idea that to have so much blind faith 
Yes, so good. You know, and trust in God. So anyway, that's July 31st. I'm going to have a water slide at my house. Anyway. <laughs> of course you are. I love it. Oh, um, so anyway, what were, what were we talking about? Well, we were talking about you embrace change. If you're oh, emotionally intelligent, oh. you embrace change, which I think as a teacher, we have to. We yeah. embrace change all the time. Oh. I know our, our church was going to bump over to a new app on something we were doing. And then I'm like, okay, good, good, good. I didn't have questions asked. And then they decided not to, right? But other people were like, I'm not changing. I'm not changing. I'm like, oh, I'm just so used to changing always. Right. It's on the wheel we're on at all times. Do you even remember how many schedules we've been on since we <laughs> started teaching there? And I love this schedule now. Even when COVID's over, we need to have a schedule similar to this. The block scheduling, less time in the building. I mean, it's the 21st century. We don't need to sit there eight hours a day right. until three. So I can't get the 308 train. I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> You know what your strengths are and your weaknesses. Mostly intelligent people are aware of those. Would you agree? Absolutely. And our kids, I know we try to get them to know that too. Like I'm, I'm, when I'm talking to you about this, I'm also talking about our first quarter project where getting kids to be more emotionally intelligent and staff to be more emotionally intelligent. And accepting, not so, putting themselves down. And the shame. There's no shame in the weakness. Just own it, right? Hey, I know. Okay. You yes. Working at it. Sure. No one's telling you to give up because you, re you recognize it was a weakness. Right. But to not beat yourself up. Yes. A, because some of the, some of these kids at school that maybe weren't the best writers were amazing artists. Stuff yes. that I would never do. Yes. Or athletes. Mm -hmm. Or some of them from those, uh, the, the woods class, they would build these things yes. that I could never put together. Yes, yes, yes. And those are great strengths. So I tell them all the time, like, we, God can give us everything. Right, right. right. Yeah, I think that the weaknesses are like our thorn in our side that keeps us humble. Yeah. Because if we were good at everything, would we ever, would we just walk around with such pride, right? right? So it's good to have those weaknesses. Like, for example, this new learning management system, I haven't really jumped into it. I'm not, I'm afraid to, because I'm one of those people, if I don't do something on the regular, I have to go back and look at the directions and until I do it on the regular all the time. And I have a co-teacher that's amazing with the, with the detailed brain. She's like the perfect opposite to me. She's got the Kelly. So oh, yeah. It, yeah, she's great. All right. So you are a good judge, number five. You're a good judge of character. Uh, emotionally intelligent people are a good judge of character. I, yeah, I would say, say that that's absolutely true. I yeah. just think you're a good judge of character because I grew up in a house of like many kids. You yeah, did. You have yeah. how many sisters and a brother? I have five sisters and a brother. It's a beautiful story. And everyone is different. So, I know. That's awesome. You know? Um, yeah. It's good not to be, it's good to be having, to have siblings for sure, right? I think it prepares you how to deal with people that you uh, may not agree with in the future that may yeah. be know your colleagues and in a productive um you know solution oriented like way not like i'm just gonna walk around hating this person you right know, work in that kind of environment right same with the teamwork that we do it's like in the teams that we are in it's good to like not just honor one type of strength like mm -hmm. the organized strength or the leading right. strength and, and not and don't forget about the creative strengths or right. the you know right. the the idea people um, number six, you dif you're difficult to offend. I don't really think I'm offended easily. I really, I mean, yeah, I could be like, I could be like, okay, that was ignorant or that was bad, but I don't see, I don't see it over it. No. Yeah. I, I, I can take a joke. Yeah. 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 Um, I think from my, from my close friends, absolutely. I know they love me and they're just being funny. Yes, you know? yes, 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 yes. That's good. You know how to say no to yourself and others. Now I struggle with this one, but I am so getting good at it since COVID hit. I'm working on it. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause you have a lot of people tugging at you. I know you're on a lot of group chats probably. I know with your family, but you have all people tugging at you because of your beauty and your heart and your compassion and you got that, you got the people I'm sure tugging at you all the time. Um, I feel like if I can help and it's not going to, um, you know, really inconvenience me or take mm -hmm. away from my children or my husband or yeah. um, my work, I would love to help. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Where I draw the line is being taken advantage of. 
Amen to that. Because there's a, uh, uh, what was the saying that I heard yesterday? Being resilient, okay, does not require you to remain in toxicity. Ooh. Yeah, something along those lines. Sweet. Being resilient does not require or does not require of you to be to maintain toxicity or live in toxicity. I live in toxicity. Oh, I love that. What if you work in a toxic environment? I'm not saying we do. I'm just saying. You create. No, I write. You you you, you, have you to create your positivity. Well, just like we come to your room a lot in the morning <laughs> to just get in, and you have stuff to do, but you always welcomed us. But we just yes, love I get in it, there. <laughs> Is there any better way to start your day than to see your besties of 18 years? Yeah, that's true. Ready for the day with you. That's it, true. You laugh. Um, yeah. To check. I, lo I love it. I love yes. I mean, popping in with her jokes. And I love that it's not gossipy. It's no. more just, it's just more just fun. fun. And, and that's what I appreciate about what it too. Working on? Do you have this? Here yeah. it. You want to yeah. hear me? Yeah. Like that. And it's just kind of like a good start to the day of it really is. and love. Yep. You know, so I like it. I do too. All right. So number eight, uh, you let go of mistakes, which again, kids, I think we could help them with that shame factor too. And I know they've been trained like as writing teachers, they've been trained to write a certain way and there's ways to unleash their voice that I, I have some activities that help do that. And then they're like, what? That's all I have to do? Yeah, then we clean it up later. Like, no problem, you know? So like that kind of thing, when they come in with that inner monologue of like, yeah. I can't write, I'm so dumb. No, 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 no. You just add like, why? Who put this in their heads? Who yes. did this? Yeah. I got to tell you, the last couple of years, I do a lot of like following of uh, people who speak on writing and reading and things like that, like on social media, on Instagram, because it's quick, it's, you know, mm -hmm. uh, easy to... I look on Twitter and all this new, like, we got to teach all, all the it's research backed strategies and ways to teach writing is all stuff you have been saying. You, okay? <laughs> Everybody would look at you like you were insane. I'm telling you, I have a prophetic gift, but nobody listens till later. <laughs> Literally, it's like, you know, what do we need the five paragraph essay for? Like, that's me, you know. Um, the, the, the point, counterpoint, point, counterpoint that you always said, I've been was, saying, why can't we do that? Yeah. You know, yeah. It's all coming out, the research is backing it, that it's a great way to teach. Amazing. Okay. I'm going to hang it up. I'm going to, I'm going to get that retirement package. <laughs> um, number nine, you give and expect nothing in return. Hello. That is you. That is you. That is you. Same that is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and then think about the kids um, in terms of our project for the first quarter. Okay. We talk about giving. Everyone perceives community service too as this punishment because you hear people coming out of like being arrested have to do community service. And then there's this perception that it's punishment when really whenever you go and help others, it changes your heart. So wouldn't that be good? Maybe a requirement for the staff too to like get out there and change some it always changes your heart when you help others. So to me, I wish that, I wish that connection of the required 24 hours of community service, I wish they really got a paradigm shift of what that really, really means. It's a beautiful thing. I wish the kids and the staff could do it together. I, I know, I know, why yeah. not? A lot of these staff members, these coaches, these uh, dean's assistants, these instructional aides, you know, our support staff, a lot of them have like, you know, great relationships with these kids and these kids, a lot of them look to them as um, surrogate mothers while they're at school or yes. the big brother or, and to see someone who is their role model also yes. enjoying and getting this like intrinsic value from yes. community service. Yes. You know what I mean? I know. I, I thought about even going out in the, um, digging up somebody's garden or, and I, I heard this today that if you go and put your feet in the soil, which I literally did that on my walk today in the city, <laughs> there's a park. I took my shoes off and I put my feet and I kind of felt silly, but I know you have a backyard, but literally put your feet in dirt. It's good to be good for your gut. It's good for your microbiomes or whatever they were saying. It was one of those. I, I went to Janice's house um, a couple days ago, celebrate her 40th birthday. Oh gigantic overgrown beautiful mint tree or mint plant oh. like 
what you want. And there's Cream and I, like a bunch of farmers, with <laughs> yeah. filling it up because I. You, you well, you usually get it from Palestine, don't you? Right. Yes, and you know my parents, their their flights got canceled three times. Oh. Um, I know. So I well, love that they're trying to come back. Well, listen, uh, the, mo we were, were worried for them to come. Um, my oldest sister, her two children separately are getting married. One is getting married in August and one is getting married in um, uh, October. So my parents would like to be there for their first grandkids' weddings. Yes. Um, and the August one was supposed to be in May, got pushed back, you know, all this stuff. And so on one hand, my kids were so disappointed that their my parents weren't coming. Yes. And of course we want to see my parents. Um, and they're afraid to leave because people are invading they're afraid to leave because there's this annex, uh, annexation of, you know, the West Bank of Palestine, which if we're going to use the real word. The real word is to steal. Mm -hmm. you know, my parents worked 50 years to save up the money to build this beautiful, you know, home in their ancestral land to go back and retire after working so many years in America and educating five daughters past their master's degrees and my brother. Yep. Be productive members of American society. So they deserve Thank you. to have the environment they want. Thank you. And that perception, I did another episode on this and uh, on getting citizenship. You're in, you're here, you're highly educated, you're pouring back in, you're giving back, not this perception that you're, you're draining the economy. It's like- My sister in California texted my, cause I, there's three of us that are in education in my family. Um, and she said, my neighbor is saying that the teachers don't want to go back to school because they want, in addition to their summer pay, they're also getting um, unemployment. I said, where is this? They're, they're, and I, I said, you go, you know, this is just like these rumors that start. These immigrants, have, they don't pay yes. taxes for the first yes. time that they're in America. Nope. When? Every, 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 sales, sales tax, no. property tax, every tax, you pay it. Gas tax, you pay it. You pay every time you consume and all that's like right. That's like filtered into society to make yeah. everybody hate each other. Yeah. And none of it is true. So <laughs> And you know what else really is really bothering me? The racism back to the racism thing. I don't ever hear black people saying we want to dominate. I just hear equality. And why is it there are certain white people that are hearing domination? I think there's a lot of the white people that are threatened, the ones that are threatened, are the ones that are doing minimal effort and living. But, but I can speak that way. I know you probably don't want to speak to that, but. Well, I will never know what it's like to be a black person in America. No. Right? right? No. I can certainly um, understand on a smaller, like on a less, um, um, intense degree you know racism and ethnocentrism and um you know sexism mm -hmm. women, you know? we understand because of that yeah. yeah we can understand because of that um i think that if anybody you know Amer america why were people enslaved and brought over to be slaves to create an economy yep it was to create an economy mm -hmm. and you know people were just claiming land. No, you, you've got a 450 year head start. You've got generational wealth. Yep. You've got inherited land. You've got all these things that you were given that people who built the economy for you are 450 years behind. Yeah. So nobody is wanting to dominate anybody. They want equality. Yep. And to, I can understand that it's scary because they're feeling like something that I've gotten is going to be taken away. No, it doesn't have to. Nothing. Everybody. No. Yeah. Not everybody. We all rise up. Everybody rises. We, there's enough for everyone. Enough. I mean, enough with that, that. No, I, know. I don't get it. Crazy. Mm. All right. Did we do the number 10? You don't hold grudges. No, we didn't do that one yet. Okay. I don't think I hold grudges. It poisons you. Yep. It wrinkles. It's, it's they say that unforgiveness thing, right? You drink the poison expecting the other person to die, to die. It's such an open door to destruction when you're bitter and resentful and unforgiving. It is such an open door to destruction on your own life. Boy, let me tell you. You know, there are people, certainly everyone's had people in their lives that have been 
hard to deal with and you just want to shake them like what is wrong with you we mm-hmm. want the best for you why yes. are you doing this to yourself yes yes um, it doesn't mean you don't love them you can be angry at their actions and things like that um but to hold the grudges does nothing for them and it does nothing for you yep and so you have to just continue to love them through it if these are people that have to remain your, in your life now, right 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 don't have to remain in your life you cut that toxicity out. Heck yes. Out. No contact, <laughs> which, which actually um, segues into number 11. We have 18 of these. Sorry. No, you neutralize toxic people. If you're emotionally intelligent, you can neutralize toxic people. Okay. I'm not so sure because I'm one of those people that I feel everybody's feelings in the room. I'm really trying to work on that. Um, so neutralize yeah. like just... Yeah, I think maybe you bring a, you can bring like a sense of like calm or a North Star to the situation where it's not going to be as volatile because you're there. Oh, yeah, I think we both do. I think all teachers have to do that. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, I think we can, yes. And think about all the different personalities of people we've worked with, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Like, you know, we have to kind of, this is, you know, we're, you know, it's just, you want to make it an awkward situation. We have to like calm the situation down (laughs) which says here now number 12 you don't seek perfection and remember my big old mantra is i'm going for proficient so that i can remain excellent in the classroom because i know myself that i could not achieve on paper what they were asking us to do to be excellent now maybe one day but i'm i'm old enough to just be like i think my life and my health and my mental health is more important than to jump through the hoops to be excellent, which is another insane discussion right there. Right. Um, which I know you are excellent on paper, but you're also excellent in the classroom. I hope to get to the point though, where I am, hey, I'm excellent in practice. I don't need to put this energy into showing that I'm excellent on paper. Yeah, one evaluator so- said to me, you are excellent, Amy, you just have to prove it. I've got you, me, you, everybody in the English department, we've got drawers and boxes and, you know, cabinets filled with these beautiful things from these students who tell us they love us. Is that not our proof? I know. Well, can you see uploading all of that? It's like here. Okay. This is letters of recommendations from my students. Um, All right. 13. You appreciate what you have. Oh yeah. Yes, for sure. Just gratitude takes so much stress out of your life. And this is another thing we can get kids to understand, like even a gratitude um, project. It could be, you know, if I think of this first quarter again, um, you disconnect. Yes, I'm learning. The summer has been rough and COVID has been rough, right? Because don't you feel like it's just everyone's trying to tug at you more? At least when we used to work in the building, we'd leave and we wouldn't really talk until the next day. Now, now it's just like 24 seven, everybody's connecting. And now I'm learning to go to the pool without any phone and I just stay away from it and it's been a lot better. Yeah. That's what used to be my walks were for in the morning. But my and now kids the kids are coming. <laughs> and my jogs and I'm like, oh, oh. I'm so sweet. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every morning, what time are you out there? So it was supposed to be Layla and I, just me and Layla. So about 6.30. I'm up Oh, early. good, good, good. I am too. 5.30 I'm waking up. I'm up at 5.30, so text me if you ever have, you know. We can walk together. Oh, that's yeah. great. I love it. Um, you limit your caffeine intake. I just bought decaf when after I read this because I don't need caffeine to wake me up. I can take a drink of coffee and go back to sleep. Listen, I don't drink. <laughs> I tried weed. <laughs> I don't smoke. Yep. So I need something. Can I you have need something. The coffee? You want the coffee. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. But does it really well, give you a jolt? Does it give you a jolt? I think we've conditioned ourselves to believe that. I'm okay. Sure I'm sure my, well, my run does the jolt. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Well, you taught me to not have sugar and coffee anymore. And it's like, all you need is the cream. And that's true. It's good enough quality cream. It'll give us a slight sweetness. It's so true. Now I just use whipped cream because cream always spoils. So I get the whole whipped cream and I squirt it on my coffee. That's my treat. <laughs> oh, I love that idea. Yeah. And then a squirt in the mouth too. Once Remember when I used to say, um, I'm giving it to 40 and then I'm not dieting a day longer. Oh yeah. yeah. You're 40. You just turned 40. I guess I'm going to push it to 50. Oh, you are so funny. I know there's some, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. You're never going to, you're never going to want to let that one go because <laughs> it just automatically happens after 50. <laughs> 
Well, you don't have to try and it starts growing. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. Three more. You get enough sleep. It, I prioritize it. Same. I, I remember my phrase, I'm going to sleep my way to sexy, which just simply meant the more you sleep, the more your body's cortisol levels go lower and the more stress-free you have. And that's why I became an early bird. It changed my life. Yes. I, I have always enjoyed sleep. Uh, I've always been a, a deep sleeper and I needed it to re-energize. I am not my sister Summer. Gosh, she can be up till two in the morning and get up at 6 a.m. and be ready to go for the day. What's wow. our next thing? And I'm like, Summer, I want to die. I'm so tired. Yes. Um, I prioritize it. You need it. It energizes you. It makes you, that's when your body repairs itself. Yes. So I absolutely. Think about how it. crazy life was for everyone before COVID. I don't know if anyone's going to go back to that schedule because it was crazy for everyone. And I There's love. No country in the world that works like this. The uh -huh. only insane insane all right two things left you stop negative self-talk in its tracks this makes me want to cry oh. i read something um like a couple years ago that really like shook me and it said find a picture of yourself as a little girl and say all the things to that picture yes that you said to yourself or you heard growing up and I sat there and I cried. And it was like two years ago. That's a perfect exercise to be more emotionally intelligent. And I just am so, I wish I had the guidance to not speak to myself that way. Exactly. And not convince myself of things that yeah. weren't true. There were other things that were great about me yeah. that I could have praised myself for, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So it's so important, especially with girls, I think, that we model this behavior for sure yeah. so be very careful of that oh that's beautiful one last thing you won't let anyone limit your joy no i so agree with you it's true not anymore not like maybe 20s you know maybe you don't want to uh you know seem like you're bragging or see but if you are my friend you're going to celebrate the things that make me happy too exactly simple <laughs> Simple. It's so simple. And yeah. something glorious and wonderful happening for you, Amy, it's like it's happening for me. Yes. I am just so happy to see somebody I love so much get ahead in life, win yes. something, succeed at something. That's how it should be. It's simple. I don't know. And to me, this, again, um, this is a way to incorporate SEL. This is a way to um, help with your attitudes about other races that you are hating on. This is just, a, a, we went down this list for that reason. What, what would you say would be like, like a final takeaway? No pressure. <laughs> True e evolving occurs really when you can think about your neighbor, your friend, the person at the grocery store and want the best for them. And if that means giving up that spot that's closer, um, putting on the mask, to protect them, it really brings a sense of joy and community and unity. Let's get this done. We can do it together. We can figure this out. And it makes you just happier. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's nothing wrong with doing things for yourself. Uh, of course, you should do things for yourself. But in situations like this, we have to think about one another. We have to. You just, I wanna put that even a step further. When you're walking down the street, in the grocery store, wherever, put a blessing on somebody. Everybody you see, just ask God to bless them. And that's already one step forward to helping this world be a better place. Absolutely. Shada, I thank you so much for joining me on this crazy day, but every day is crazy and I love you so much. I love you. I know, it's good to connect, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh, I love you so much. Okay, love, love you. you. Okay, bye. bye.